All right, welcome back to Alien Rest of My Garage. Uh, we have finally got this cross member in. Uh, I'll open them in a second. But the uh, cross member, um, if it fits and works, I'm going to go ahead and uh, install it. And then maybe we'll be able to get the subframe with the engine and the tranny underneath the car. That's my goal today. So I got this from Classic Muscle, and um, it took forever. I'm, I'm going to beat him up on the lead time. I mean, two and a half weeks. And it was supposedly coming from Texas, I think. I don't know, but anyways. Packing material. And that's it. All right. Uh, it actually looks short, but it did say this is adjustable. So uh, that's probably it right there. Move back and forth. Put those in the two holes, and you can move this back and forth so it adjusts to your uh, where the transmission mount is going to go. All right, let me show you where I, uh, that came in the bag. I, you know, I didn't mean to start without pointing this out. Um, this is all the hardware that came with it. These obviously are the two bolts that go here. I don't know what those are for because they don't fit this. But uh, you have four bolts, so those are the outside bolts. Got four lock washers, so that's all going together. We've got eight washers here, two there, so they're going to go with this. They got two lock washers right here. They're going to go with that probably. Or not. They'll probably go with these. Anyways, uh, the welding on this thing is actually pretty good. I wish I could weld that way. Um, it's it's one of the cheapest cross members out there. It's no frills. I mean, I, I saw some for five hundred dollars. I was like, no way am I going to pay that. The part number on this is again, it's from Cla Classic Muscle, and the part number is. 140-158 and it's a cross member and um, it said it was for an LS swap on a 69 Camaro or Chevy vehicle from this date to that date but it was uh, specific to the 4L60 the 4L60E uh, transmission. That's why I bought it. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and put this on and see if it works. All right, there's it is. Uh, there's it is. Uh, there it is installed. Um, uh, just a point. Uh, leave everything loose, even these and this one on either side, because this did not line up exactly, and I had to use some uh, straps to pull it over to the left and right. Uh, but it's in. Cross member in. Now I can. Uh, Put it in the car.
All right, um, as you saw, I just put the subframe bolts on. Um, the bolts that are off to the right and left of the subframe bolts on the front are just guide bolts. They're more to help you guide the, the chassis straight, keep it straight so you're able to, uh, from what I understand, um, line everything up. As long as those line up, you'll be able to line everything else up. You just got to, you know, move stuff around. It's great to have these uh, tires on, these casters, those little stands. Um, it makes it easier to move around, especially when you're doing it yourself. <laughs> um, everything's lining up, and I got enough room uh, in the back. As you can see, that's a lot of room, so you're able to you know, put your hand back there at least to undo a, a bolt or something and hook up uh, solenoids, sensors. Um, and as you can see, I put long tube, tube, tube from Canada, eh? Uh, long tube headers in. Uh, the short tubes were not, uh, short shorties were not doing it. Um, I had to do a lot of banging to get around the gearbox. This goes right around the gearbox. Yeah, you can't see with all the rags on there. Um, and nothing's touching. It is a little close to the um, drive shaft, but um, I'll have to test it again to make sure and make adjustments. Uh, but everything's looking pretty good. Everything's lined up. I, I really like the distance. I'll have to say that. Um, so let's talk about the spark plug wires and the headers. All right, here are the spark plug wires. Uh, this is the, the original I bought for the 5.3, and here's the ones I bought off uh, Amazon. Um, they're uh, from uh, JDM Speeds. You know, I, I read the thing, and they offered low resistance, uh, high heat, uh, silicon, um, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and go with those. Plus, I couldn't find anything else that had the, the turn like this. Or a 90-degree angle turn, I guess, would have worked. But this is uh, 45. As you can see, the obviously, it's uh, uh, totally different and shorter. So let's go take a look. All right, here's the new ones installed. Um, uh, I like the fact that they're red. <laughs> and those are long headers. Um, they're barely, barely next to the wires, but uh, they work. Just make sure when you're putting these in, you get that click here and the click up here, just to make sure they're in. Um, other than that, they work with the headers. Um, I'm going to stick with the long headers because they work out below. I'll show you later. But um, I'll probably put, I have the uh, uh, the heat shield boots. I'm going to, they're red too. <laughs> um, I'm going to put those on here all the way down, all the way down, uh, and all the way down there. So it'll just increase the protection for the uh, the silicon. Um, supposedly it takes high heat, but you know a little extra. Uh, the uh, guy at the uh, AutoZone I talked to is really knowledgeable. He said I should wrap these, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't think I will. They fit pretty good, and I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, moving on. Hey, real quick, here are the uh, boots on there with the, uh, I'll call them sleeves. Uh, like I said, they're red. Uh, everything's not touching over here, and it uh, works out. This side's really good. Again, this side, you got those two areas where it's really close, and it does touch. So, I am going to make a bracket and push it in. So it stays away and it doesn't burn up in the process. But 
that's what they look like. I think they look great. Um, I'll put the, in the uh, description below a uh, link to where I got them on Amazon. Um, they were like the boots and the uh, wires. And, uh, and the tubes. The tubes. The long tubes. So I'll put all that in the uh, description below. Alright, moving on. Uh, brake booster on. I'm going to put the steering in. Um, and uh, I think it would be easier. So here are the parts I have. Okay, this is the old one. When I pulled apart the car, this was the only thing on there. And then this. Um, I saw on there that this was a 69 Camaro steering boot column. So I went ahead and bought it. Um, I'm going to use it. It's going to stick out. I'll show you when I put it in. And then here's the four bolts for the or, uh, um, screws with the uh, washers that go over each of these points. Uh, but I'm not using that. I got a new piece of styrofoam looking thing. It's not rubber. It's very cheap. This is rubber. This is rubber. This is styrofoam. Odd. Anyways, I'm going to use that and set it in. So let's get started on that. Well, there you have it. Uh, steering wheel installed. Uh, I didn't show you, but I, I uh, tighten these down. And uh, it just barely. Barely misses the header. Anyways. So, of course, when I get the. Uh, firewall pad, it's just a, a padding there to uh, stop noise. I'm going to have to remove some of this stuff. But uh, this is about uh, moving forward because I want to install the uh, brake system. Now that I got the uh, Camaro together with the subframe in the engine. And the transmission hooked up. So... Um, uh, for right now, that is it for this steering column. Also, there's two 15 millimeter bolts. Those are 10 millimeter. These are uh, 15 that uh, hold on either side of the column, the bracket. Um, but uh, let me show you what I'm going to do next. Well, I'm going to come back tomorrow. Uh, as you can see, it is almost 100 degrees in here. And the humidity is probably 90, 85, 90. 
So uh, I will come back tomorrow and show you what I was going to do. So when I get more, I'll put more on. All right, it's the next day. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. And it's already 80 degrees and about 85% humidity. So I got 20 more degrees before I call it a day. Anyways, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to work on the brake, uh, plumbing the brakes. We're also going to install the uh, power booster. Um, master cylinder, power booster, whatever you want to call it. No, just master cylinder. And uh, what we're going to do is from the rear, I've already plumbed the rear lines up to the splitter. And then I'm going to have quarter inch, quarter inch tube, which I got from AutoZone. It was when that bad is like six, seven bucks. I got a six foot and a four foot line. Um, and that's going to come up and attach to this point right here. And I got this also. This These are uh, uh, steel nut and uh, they're F43s. And they'll accept a quarter inch line. But it fits right in there. So if we plumb all the way up to the front, then I'll go ahead and uh, hook up the uh, the front lines to the front axle or uh, front brakes. They've already been plumbed, and I've already tested the hookup. So and I've bent them the right way, hopefully. <laughs> um, but I really I really like this material. It's easy to bend. You can bend it with your your, your thumbs. You can grab it and just bend it like that or you go to Harbor Freight and buy one of these for five bucks I got this on sale for 450 one of their coupons you can go to Harbor uh, Harbor Freight .com or just put in Harbor Freight coupons and you get 25% off just for any day of the week anyways So let's get started. All right, apologize for the fan in the background. I'll talk a little louder. But right now, that's the only air conditioning I got. Anyways, um, I went ahead and mounted the, uh, these are actually 96 Camaro rear brakes from a 96 uh, Camaro. Um, I read another article in, um, HotRod.com that said you could do this. I went ahead and hooked it up and it did hook up. There are a little bit of issues, but I'll work through them. Um, they might not work and I might have to go to aftermarket, but uh, we'll see how it, how it goes. So for right now, this is what I have. So I've already hooked this up. There's more of that bent line I was using. Moved it over here, and it goes to the splitter. Pretty sure it's called splitter. Anyways, um, I went to the junkyard. I got this off a 04 Suburban. They wanted like 25 bucks for this thing at the uh, AutoZone and O'Reilly's and stuff. I was like, nope. So I went down there. I got it for three bucks, and it's the rubber's still good. Um, so anyways, uh, I just cleaned it up and uh, it worked out. So everything hooked up. This is hooked up right. And then it goes back here. I took the bracket from the Suburban and uh, I mounted it right there. And the white line is how I'm going to do my route. It goes down that way. It is going to be tricky to bend, make all those bins, but we'll make it work. All right, we're under the car. So where I left off was the um, splitter, splitter, splitter line. I'll call it. Right here is where I connected it. I kind of moved this around so my my line would go straight where I want it to go. Because the less bends, the better. <laughs> um, so it's connected here and here, 
And then again, this is off a uh, 04 uh, Suburban. I just cleaned it up and then uh, plus this bracket. I cleaned it up and then uh, spray painted it. Um, so I connected it here, went down, connected right up here. Just followed my white line all the way down, connected right there. Cut over. Cut over and there's a spot where I connect, connect it and I connected, connected it right there. I'm sure that connection is for something else, I'm not sure. And I went along and right there is where it ended. So I put a uh, connector on there. Um, and then I connected the next line, which was four foot long. And there's the other line. Remember I had 10 feet. And so uh, the first line was six, this is four. And as you're going along, you see another connector. This is where I screwed up. <laughs> um, so be careful when you bend these things, even with the, uh, I guess a pipe bender. It can collapse on itself if you uh, bend it too tight. So this is where I, I bent it in too tight and it collapsed on itself and I did it the other side. So I just redid it and then uh, it came out fine. And then it goes through, shoots up, comes out right here, connected it one more time and then came up and attached. I might have some issues with this because of the uh, uh, fender in, uh, inside the engine bay. Sheet metal might hit it. But um, here are the other two connections. I know like spaghetti looking, uh, but it, everything's connected up. Goes down here, one goes to the uh, driver's side and the other goes to the passenger side. Now the brakes that I, I used, the they actually uh, came with the car. I went out and bought brand new uh, calipers. I just used the same uh, code that was on the calipers, the old ones, because the uh, the old ones I had were just terrible. So I got new calipers from AutoZone, and everything connected up really well. Now I just got to fill it up and bleed the brakes. Hey, one last thing. Uh, I hooked up the uh, brake booster to the um, brake pedal. That was the last part of the uh, pretty much brake install. And um, before you can do all that, you got to put your steering support in there. Anyways, uh, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Alien Resto Mod Garage.